Hello everyone and welcome to the course on simulating fluid flows using Python. So far we have started to look at the two dimensional convection diffusion problems using a con uh, central differencing perspective and in the last lecture we have looked at the theoretical formulation of the problem. So we had looked at how the problem would be handled by the central differencing scheme if we have to use the finite volume method and what would be the governing equation in the discretized form. So just to briefly recapitulate, we had uh, assumed a simplified version of the problem and we had molded the governing equation in the standard form of AP phi P equals to AE phi E plus AW phi W that is the east and the west node plus AN phi N plus AS phi S. So in two dimension situation, we have these four surrounding points that surround our finite volume and we are interested to see the evolution of the phi variable at our point of interest p. So today we are going to look at uh, the same problem from a coding perspective or from a programming perspective and we are going to write a python script for that. Actually I have already written that for you. So what we would do is we would basically convert our existing uh, 2D diffusion script and add in some elements of the convection part to that and that is it. That would be our uh, two dimensional code for the convection diffusion problem. So I hope that uh, this lecture would be very helpful for you especially if you are looking to understand how to solve the fluid flow equations in 2D because the Navier-Stokes equations are a very uh, special case of the convection diffusion problem at the end. So I hope you will enjoy this lecture and without wasting any further time let us get started. All right, so let me brief you the problem that we are working on. I have made a very small change as compared to the problem that I mentioned in the last lecture. So we would be considering to trying to solve a problem in a square domain where the temperature of the two walls that is the left and the top walls they are held at one units and the temperature at the right walls and the bottom wall are held at zero unit. So these temperature are basically the non-dimensionalized version of uh, a temperature case. So you can think of let us say 20 degrees at the right and the bottom wall and uh, accordingly the top and the left wall they are maybe at let us say 40 degrees. So what I have done is I have subtracted that 20 degrees from my uh, the actual value of the temperature and I have divided by the temperature difference. So let us say if the low value is indicated as TL and the high value is indicated as TH. So this non-dimensionalized version can be obtained by a very simple formula that is T minus TL divided by TH minus TL. And usually in CFD it is a very standard practice to normalize roughly everything. So for example the length of the uh, the lengths involved in the CFD pictures they might be normalized by the length of some domain or the height of some domain. So any characteristic length that could be used to normalize the distance units or the distance uh, or any kind of space related coordinates and similarly for the time or the velocity there might be some characteristic time or some characteristic velocity that would be used to normalize that. So whenever I am presenting these numbers 0, 1, please do not take them as an actual number because they do not generally represent the actual number. They are always non-dimensionalized version of the actual numbers. So here we are trying to solve uh, this particular problem where we have temperature of 1 and 1 on two walls and 0 on the other walls. And here we are imposing a velocity field of 1 meter per second in both x and y direction. So this is again, uh, this for now I have written as 1 meter per second, but if it is written as 1, so that is meaning implying that this is a 1 non-dimensionalized characteristic velocity. So I hope that this would be clear as to what the problem is. And now in order to solve it in Python, so this is the code that we had already completed for the 2D heat conduction problem. So in this problem, we know that we would have four different coefficients and when we only had the convection, the important part to note was that we only had the diffusion related aspects into the these coefficients. So for example, if I have to refer back here, so this AW, AE, AS and AN, they would not have this F 
which is the convection strength. So, F is basically taken as 0 and all the coefficients here they are equal to D which in our 2D conduction case was K A divided by H. So, I hope that this would be clear and now I would try to give you an overview of how to convert the same code from a convection uh, from a diffusion code to the convection diffusion script and this is actually very simple we are only going to change these coefficients and the idea is now if I go to these coefficients here so we have gamma over h minus u by 2 so this is uh, the, I have changed the appearance of these uh, coefficients here the reason is this was a heat conduction oriented problem and that is why rather than gamma we had the K which is the thermal conductivity into the picture and in this particular problem we had taken an arbitrary scalar that has a diffusivity of gamma which we had specified to be 0.1. So, here we were given the value of gamma directly. You can take any values of uh, the velocity or the gamma or even the cross sectional area and other properties as well. So, this is again just for the uh, demonstration purpose that I have uh, chosen these particular values there is not any special significance to these numbers. So, allow me to walk you through the code as to what we are trying to do. So, initially we import all the important uh, modules that we need. We need the numpy module for the numerical calculations and we need the pi plot for the plotting part. Subsequently, we define the number of grid points and the domain size and based on that we get the grid spacing. Here I am defining the gamma as 0.1, the velocity as uh, 1. So, here based on u, gamma and h which is the grid spacing, we can get the picklet number. So, again if you remember from the 1D diffu convection diffusion discussion, picklet number is important from a stability perspective whenever we are trying to use this uh, central differencing algorithm. So, if the picklet number is very high. If, and if you remember correctly, the scheme becomes unbounded that it, it does not remain bounded in the uh, feasible or physical scenario and uh, sometimes you start to get non-realistic results and that is why we are trying to keep an eye on what the picklet number for that particular problem is. So, after defining the picklet number, we initialize all the matrix here. So, here I am just calling the variable as t rather than phi. So, you can take the variable accordingly. And for the two boundaries, that is the left wall and the top wall, we are uh, hard coding these numbers here that we are saying that the 0th uh, index for both the row and the column that is equivalent to the so, this, this particular one is equivalent to the top boundary and this is equivalent to the left boundary. I am defining the temperature there as 1 and after that we have the standard procedure that we want the error to go beyond 10 to the power minus 8 and then we write the code using a while loop that the while is error is greater than epsilon. We compute for all the points that are lying in the range of 1 to n minus uh, 1 and uh, accordingly we define these coefficients uh, that is given as d minus f by 2. So, here I have uh, just assumed that the density is taken as 1 everywhere. I am assuming that it is an incompressible flow and the density would not change. So, that is why I have not uh, described or written a row here as well as here. So, the row is just taken as 1 in these calculations. Of course, you can have a different value of rho everywhere in the domain and then you can write rho as a function of i comma j as well. So, after we define all these coefficients, we define a p and then based on that we define the new value of the temperature. I hope that this particular routine would not be a surprise for you because we have literally used the same coding structure, the same arrangement in all the codes that we have de developed so far. So, I am trying to stay very consistent in the kind of discussion that we are having so that you do not have to uh, come uh, uh, so that I am not providing a lot of new content in terms of coding because otherwise it might become a little bit more tedious. So, now uh, after we obtain the new solution we recalculate the numerical error and then we further modify uh, we further monitor the error. So, here I am monitoring the error after every 100 iteration. So, for now maybe I will just change it to 250 so that it does not take a uh, long time for the code to actually run. So, I will just uh, modify it to 250 here so that uh, we can see the numerical error after every 250 iteration and the rest of the part is basically just towards plotting the temperature distribution 
as a form of a contour here. So, the contour F represents a filled contour where we have x and y as the spatial coordinate and we have the temperature as the variable that we want the contour of and we want 12 different contour levels for the temperature distribution. So, you can change the 12 if you want uh, a very uh, very visibly distinct contour then you can increase or decrease the number of levels accordingly. So, let me run this code and uh, while it is running in the meantime we can also have some discussion. So, when I run this code the first thing is that the picklet number is around 0 0.2. So, again 0 0.2 is in the in the regime of where we would not uh, find any problems and now you can see that uh, we have we have started to get the error distribution here. So, please ignore this top part because this is I think from the previous calculations and I have not closed that particular figure. So, now you can see that for these calculations uh, the error is going down which is a good sign and uh, I think we have around 3000 iterations so far and we can see that after 3000 iteration probably the code did not go for the next data point and it was converged somewhere in between. So, now uh, this is the domain of uh, one unit uh, length in both the x and y direction and here we are plotting uh, or visualizing the temperature as a color contour. So, here the this the entity on this right hand side this is called as a color bar. So, the color bar basically represents uh, the association of various colors with the numerical values that you can see here. So, when we wrote 12 uh, in the code in our case. So, this particular 12 number it basically represents this distinction of various colors. So, we get 12 different colors to represent our variations in the domain and here uh, important thing is this yellow color represents a high value of 1 the pure yellow or whatever you see here that represents a value of 1 and as it becomes green to blue its value decreases. So, this particular problem it had a variation of 1 on the left and the top wall. So, of course, the temperature would remain high in that region and similarly on the same argument the temperature would be low in these regions here and there is this uh, big band of regions where we are observing like a mixed range. So, the fluid is getting mixed here because of the convection as well as the diffusion effect. So, this is the overall understanding of the problem as to what uh, we are trying to actually do. So, in the next uh, maybe two lectures we would look at this problem from an upwind perspective or the upwind scheme perspective and what we would do is we would drop the convection uh, we would drop the diffusion term. So, we would only have the convection in the problem and there we would try to see what would happen in the situation. The idea is uh, let me give you a hint the idea is we are trying to look at the things from a uh, false diffusion perspective. So, uh, when we would look at the upwind scheme and if you remember I had briefly mentioned it before that the upwind scheme it suffers from the false diffusion aspects. So, I would try to uh, demonstrate it through the usage of this same particular problem. So, in the next uh, in the next lecture I think we would just look at the upwind scheme perspective of convection diffusion and then in the lecture after that we would only look at the convection problem and we would see that is there anything going on that is linked to this false diffusion scenario. So, the next lecture would focus totally on the upwind scheme we would look at both the theoretical aspect as well as the code in the same lecture together. If you have any questions regarding the central differencing part please write them down in the comments and I would be happy to answer that. If you like this video please hit the like button so that I know that you are still interested in this lecture series. In the next lecture where we talk about the upwind scheme uh, please take care of yourself and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.